The Lord be with you. Well, this, I think, uh, after all of these months of shooting these at-home meditations, uh, is the first time that I have shot one outdoors in the winter with snow on the ground. Uh, we are past Christmas now, so we did not have a white Christmas. Uh, instead, as we said in the last video, we had a blue Christmas. Um, but it is not quite New Year's yet, so it looks like we will have a white New Year's. So, Happy New Year to all of you uh, who are journeying through this new season. Uh, I am sitting outdoors in my backyard, um, not just with a winter jacket on, but actually with my One Life shirt on because um, winter often makes me think about um, winter camps. Uh, I have been doing winter camps with Zion um, since the January of 2014. Uh, and these uh, have been incredible blessings in so many ways. Um, we've made a couple of videos now that have at least mentioned uh, the struggle that our camps have had uh, during this summer of COVID. There were no um, summer camps going on, no extended stays as there have been in the past. Um, financially, that has caused a lot of woe um, for the camps themselves. And um, I was able to personally attend a um, silent retreat at um, our camp up north, Covenant Point, um, at the end of September. And if my understanding was correct, I think that was the first time uh, they had actual group structured activity um, since uh, the January before. So. Um, while the camps um, slowly were able to open and do some things. I know we're, there were some uh, Christmas opportunities for family camp getaways um, this December. Unfortunately, what we have found out is um, there will be no winter camps this year, uh, which is understandable. You know, the state of the world is changing, but not rapidly enough to allow um, for close quarters for an extended period of time. Uh, in a world that's still very, very uncertain and um, a lot of questions and concerns about the virus still, and those are not going to be resolved in the next several weeks. So unfortunately, we won't be doing a winter camp at Zion this year. Uh, so in place of that, um, I just kind of want to reminisce a little bit about um, the camp experiences. What I've appreciated about both of the camps in our conference, um, what I've appreciated about um, the uh, opportunities to connect with our students and um, just to do different activities. I did not come from <clears throat> a camping background, uh, didn't have a lot to do with Christian camps growing up. Uh, or even in my early adult years, although um, I have been part of churches that have supported camps, but that was always something I did from a distance. I didn't necessarily participate in camp retreats. Uh, so, you know, this year, um, I know for our congregation, some of the things that we've liked to do is after we get back from camp, we would often do a slideshow for people of uh, what our students experienced and how it went. And um, consider this sort of the slideshow in the virtual realm um, of things that have happened in the past as opposed to this year. So uh, as I said, we have two camps in our conference, uh, one in southern Wisconsin in Lake Geneva, that is Covenant Harbor. Uh, and one in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, uh, that's in Iron River, that's um, Covenant Point. Uh, both camps are very different from one another. Um, our students have gone to both. Um, some years we've done two of each one. Uh, other years we've split them and did one group, middle school group at one and a high school group at the other. The main difference is, if you don't know, um, the Lake Geneva camp 
uh, is a little bit bigger. You get more students who participate in that because it's closer to the Chicago suburbs um, and a lot of the churches in our denomination come from the greater Chicago area. So um, that camp typically has um, larger groups, um, bigger activities, more activities, um, more structure. The camp up in the UP is the opposite in that um, you tend to get smaller groups, not as many people make the drive all the way up there. Uh, so there's less structured time, and therefore there's also um, a greater level of intimacy. I've appreciated both. Um, I love the staff uh, at both. Um, everyone just does a really good job. So um, some of the things that would happen, you know, there were always uh, a speaker for the weekend. Um, so we had really good speakers uh, during our winter retreat weekends. Uh, they were structured over a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, there was always a good band, um, and you had opportunities to not just worship with the band, um, but they also often um, ate in the cafeteria with you, so you could hang out with them kind of in between things. You got to know them a little bit. And there were all sorts of great activities. So some of the things um, that we did, uh, lots of games. Um, there was broom ball, which is uh, something I had never encountered before, kind of a weird hybrid of hockey and soccer, I guess. Um, there were a lot of indoor activities, game boards uh, like ping pong and air hockey. Uh, oftentimes you could do things in the gym, uh, things like volleyball. Uh, there was a rock climbing wall at um, one of the camps. Uh, there is basketball. Our boys always liked to spend a lot of time in their free time playing basketball in the gymnasium. Uh, there were things like um, zip lining, uh, tubing. Uh, you could do kind of a ropes course. They had the, the big swing outside at one of the camps. Um, I think the northern camp had this crazy little um, activity called um, carpet ball, uh, which is kind of like pool played with your hands. Uh, there were all sorts of uh, crazy skits and trivia games um, that were done uh, sometimes uh, just for the counselors um, to entertain the students. Sometimes it was just the students. Uh, sometimes it was a mixture of the students and the counselors together doing things. And of course, probably the favorite activity um, that the kids always psyched themselves up for and um, the adults love to see in the congregation, uh, the most amount of pictures we always showed every year was of the polar dipping. Uh, kids, uh, perfectly good, warm kids, uh, chose to willingly dive through the ice, a hole in the ice, into the uh, freezing waters and come running out. And um, I am proud to say that in the uh, six years that I had been doing winter camps, uh, never once did I polar dip, and that is not something I regret in the least. Um, so the basic idea was um, experientially, you show up on a Friday night. Um, sometimes there was uh, an activity. Um, sometimes the speaker started their session Friday night uh, with their first lesson. Uh, and we always had group talkback time right afterwards where you could, could discuss in your group what you heard, what that meant to you. Um, Saturday morning after breakfast, uh, there was always some big group activity um, amongst all the groups. Uh, there was another session. There was um, an opportunity for some uh, unstructured time in the afternoon between lunch and dinner. 
Uh, that's where people would often kind of pursue their own interests, and they always had lots of activities. Um, <clears throat> Saturday evening after dinner was usually um, when there was a very emotional um, session with the speaker um, who would just sort of get real and you had gotten comfortable enough with him or her so that you could really listen. And of course, there's some fatigue in there. You've dropped a lot of your emotional walls. Uh, so there was always some prayer time <clears throat> after that. And people just uh, made decisions. Uh, people were moved in certain ways after that. Uh, Sunday morning, <clears throat> was typically your closing and that's where um you know people would say goodbyes um to students that they had met um, um even if you knew that um the people that you traveled with um you were still going to travel home with you knew something was going to change when you left camp and um that is the hard part, you know. Uh, so many good things happen at winter camp. Uh, it is a time uh, where there is bonding. So even though a lot of our own students knew each other in some way from their spiritual formation classes or youth groups or whatever, uh, you just bond in this camp experience uh, more so than anywhere else that I've seen. Uh, there is a spiritual awakening that happens at camp. I think because you're out of your normal element and you're there for a concentrated period of time, it's not just like a singular event, um, that I really think the spirit gets a hold of you and opens your ears and your eyes and your heart to new things. And that's always exciting to see with the students and with the leaders. Camp, uh, in my mind, has become very much a, a necessary part of our formation uh, for the students to be formed more into adults, uh, but for all of us to be formed into deeper followers of Jesus. So the whole idea uh, behind this uh, one life uh, this is what the camp up north calls their high school retreat every year. It's always one life. Um, now, there's lots of different sub-themes. We've been to one called Deep Freeze. Uh, we've been to one called... Um, uh, I can't even think of all of the names that we've gone through. But what I love about that idea of one life, it comes from a passage in Ephesians chapter 4 verses four through six that say, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. And I believe the idea for the leadership uh, year in and year out is um, we only have one life, uh, one life to live, but also uh, we should be living a singular life. You shouldn't be one person at school and a different person at home. You shouldn't be one school or person in your youth group and a different person when you're around your school friends. Uh, you shouldn't be one person at winter camp and somebody else when you get home, uh, this should be integrating us into one life of faith in the one Lord through our one baptism by the one Spirit. So uh, I just want to give a shout out this year to all of the leaders who have spent time with me on these winter camps. Uh, Mrs. Heimerl, uh, praise be to God for her. We have spent so many winter camps together. Um, I think of Mrs. Hoffman, who has accompanied me. Uh, I think of Mrs. Bennon, who has accompanied me. Uh, and then this last year, 2019-2020 um, winter camp, um, uh, Shane and Pam took our high schoolers and... Um, uh, Ruth and Brian took our middle schoolers, and for that, 
Uh, I am tremendously thankful. You guys know um, what it means to spend intimate, personal time with these kids in this important phase of their lives. Uh, but also, um, man, I just want to thank all of our students from the past. Uh, there are so many of you who hold such a dear place in my heart because as we've said at camp, it's hard to come home and explain the experience to other people. You just had to be there. You had to live through that. And for that, I feel like um, we have grown closer together and I will never regret that no matter how much time or distance comes between us. Uh, and I really just want to thank the staff of the camps uh, who work so hard year in and year out to provide this sacred space for people to really grow and be transformed more and more into the image of Christ. Uh, so let me just pray with you really quickly. Father in heaven, while our hearts grieve uh, that there will not be winter camps for our students this year, um, we are thankful for all of the work that has been done in the past. Lord, may you continue to be with students who have gone to winter camp uh, and to help them keep growing in their faith. May you continue to be with um, students who were intending to go to winter camp, and maybe this was even going to be their first winter camp, but could not because of COVID-19. Uh, Lord, may you open other pathways, bring other opportunities and other people into their lives to invest in them and help them grow in the faith. And Lord, may you provide more opportunities in the years to come. But Father, bless these camps. I pray for Covenant Point and Covenant Harbor. I pray for all the staff, all the volunteers, uh, all the people who work uh, to keep these things afloat. May you provide for them in supernatural ways. May you keep them open. May you give them creative ways to continue to minister to the communities around them. And Lord, uh, make opportunities for us to be together on these sites, even soon. Lord, as we enter into this new year, um, we pray to you because we trust all that is impossible for humankind is possible for you. So may you do immeasurably more than we could even ask or think. In the name of Jesus Christ, our newborn King, our risen Savior, and our eternal Lord. Amen. So sisters and brothers, in these ongoing days of pandemic, may the peace of God be with you. Amen.